massive voice, massive name, let's talk about Birgit Nilsson. She was born in Sweden. Her parents were farmers, and because Birgit was very soon interested in music, her dad bought her an organ. Of all the instruments he could have bought, the man bought an organ. Why? She loved singing so much that she wanted to become a singer. But then my parents, they thought I should, you know, be a little bit practical girl, I should take over the farm, I should marry a farmer. So they sent me to a school where I had to cook learn to cook and to bake and wave and all those things. So she gets ready to become a farmer until the choir master at her church notices her singing at the service. He starts to teach her voice technique and he sends her to the entrance exam at the Musical Academy of Stockholm. We were then 49 people, also the vorgesungen haben and I bin as number one. We were only two schülers that came in and I came in as number one. That was my happiest day in my life. During all her years as a student, she never really found the teacher. She says that she found her voice technique herself. In 1946, she had to replace last minute the soprano in the Freischütz at the Stockholm Royal Opera. That was her first appearance on a stage. Even though she was a nervous wreck during the rehearsal because she made a mistake during her aria, the performance in the end was a massive success. Her second role was Lady Macbeth, which is like crazy <laughs> to sing that when you're young. that she started to sing Wagner and she became the Wagnerian soprano of the 20th century. One of the queens, if not the queen. In 1954, she made her debut at the Wien Staatsoper and within nine days, she had to sing Elizabeth. <laughs> and Aida. That's what we call vocal cords of steel. When she had her debut in New York at the Met, singing Isolde, the next day of the premiere, she was on the front page. One of her partner in crime on stage was Corelli, especially in Toronto. <laughs> eventually retired at her parents' farm and a famous prize was created after her. Every two or three years, the singer or conductor or special production of an opera house that wins the Birgit Nielsen Prize gets a million dollars. Fun fact, well, not fun, but surprising. She had a stalker for nine years, a young American woman. The woman was sending her flowers at all her performances. She was always at the first row. She would book rooms right next to Birgit's in hotels and in planes. She would book the seat right next to her. At some point, she would even steal from her dresses, photos, jewelry, underwear. It was a mess. Finally, the poor woman committed suicide and she left a note in front of Birgit Nilsson's hotel room with a quote from Isolde's death aria. Another anecdote, this time a bit more fun. Birgit Nilsson was not really getting along with the very famous maestro, Herbert von Karajan. And during a rehearsal at the Vienna Staatsoper, Nilsson's necklace of pearls broke. And as Karajan was helping her retrieve all the pearls, he asked her, are these real pearls bought with your fees of La Scala? And she replied, no, these are fake pearls bought with your Vienna Staatsoper fees. Hope you still like me if you pay me. 
me. Now her face is on the Swedish banknote of 500 kroner. Well, she did become one of the highest paid singer of her field, but she was negotiating all of her contracts herself. Now we would call her a diva, but the woman was always getting what she wanted. And for that, respect.